Hello, what's up guys? All right, this is gonna be my first episode. I honestly have no idea You know where it's gonna go from here. I'm gonna try to come at you guys every Wednesday Some of you probably know me as uh, let's see John John Rufi John Rufael Medical student crash dice really doesn't matter what you know me as I just got a message and I'm trying to I Guess hope that it will go out and hopefully make a difference, but you got to start somewhere so I am just starting my clinical years of medicine, which will be my third year of medical school. And I'm just beginning to notice a bunch of things. And I don't know if it doesn't help you guys out, I'm hoping to document it for myself. You know, maybe there are some other people who feel the same way about the things I'm gonna say. So first off, I'm gonna say I failed out of medical school in 2008. What is it now, 2015? So yeah, about se seven years ago. So, uh, I don't know. I did a bunch of things. It's not important right now. I'll tell you as we go through our episodes and I'm hoping, I'm hoping it will be inspirational for you guys as well too. Uh, the story as it unfolds. Not just my own, but others I will share as well too. So, things I'm just going to tell you about. Just a little bit behind the scenes about the life of med school. How it is uh, as I go through different departments and hospitals. So, just let's just get into it. So it's my fourth week right now in the emergency room. It's not technically my clinical years yet. I'm with a Caribbean school, so they have a program. It's called preclinical years. It's about a six week program. Gets you used to the, the hospital life. So let me tell you what I'm getting used to so far. I've seen lots of great things. I've seen lots of not so great things. And I'm not here to you know focus on anything negative, but here just to, let's say, shine some light on a few things and you guys decide what you want to do with it. So today I'm about to finish uh, my shift in the ER and a 91 year old male comes into the ER and he's unresponsive, uh, he's shaking, he has tremors mostly in the left hand, just uh, shaking like this so you're thinking maybe it's something upper motor, upper motor uh, neuron problems, possibly. Uh, it didn't turn out to be that, I'll tell you what it was in a second. But he's 91 years old, his wife comes in, they're from Puerto Rico, uh, English. You know, pretty decent, enough to understand, but you know, it doesn't matter where you're from, right? It just, you know, everybody's gonna feel the same way. So keep that in mind, doesn't matter where you're from, treat everybody the same, whether you understand the language or not. And, uh, you know, she's looking worried, she's trying to give the history to the doctors, you got a whole team. Now just imagine that, you got a whole team, you got nurses, you got residents, you got the attending, you got, you know, us the medical students, you know, trying to learn too. And, you know, she has no idea what's going on. So, you know, she gives her history and everything, and, you know, she's looking all worried, everyone's suspecting a stroke. The stroke team comes down surrounding them, got the AKG on, and, you know, want to do some blood work, everything. So, uh, they get all their information and whatnot, and the thing I want to tell you is, you know, he goes off to the CT, see if, you know, he has a, has a bleed, possibly, as well, too. And the wife's just sitting there by herself, and, you know, she's sitting there, you know, she's all upset, and you know, everybody, you know, they're doing what they can to help out, but... You know, I see some people, they're not even doing paperwork. I cannot judge them, but, you know, they got the phones out, they're playing on it, whatnot. But anyways, again, I'm not trying to say anybody's not doing their job because, of course, the priority is to treat the patient. But, you know, I'm just saying for you, look around. Uh, I'm calling this episode just pull up a chair because what happened, you know, she's just standing there. So, you know, I look around, I find a chair, uh, I pull up the chair for her. And she sits down, I sit down next to her, and uh, I just start talking to her, you know, I'm like, you know, I like the accent, you know, where is it from? She says, Puerto Rico. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, buenos dias, hablas español, lo siento, you know, bendiciones. I just learned, you know, my Spanish from high school, I'm actually Egyptian. But, you know, it just put a smile on her face, because, you know, my Spanish is kind of broken and whatnot. But uh, anyway, so I just started talking to him, like, you know, how is it going? And, you know, it's actually, I was taking history in a sense too, but in a conversational way. So again, I'm not trying to teach you how to do it, but I'm just telling you something else. So, you know, she starts telling me, you know, they're drinking um, tea or whatnot, and they, you know, had some honey, 
and he loves the honey so you know she's smiling a little bit and I'm not trying to you know tell her oh he's gonna be okay I'm not trying to give her false hope or anything just you know let her ease down a little bit too anyways uh, so it comes back fortunately it was just a seizure there the CT came out negative but um, I'm like can I get you anything you know maybe some water I had no idea where to get the water so I just went, you know, a couple bucks, a uh, bo bottle of water for her and whatnot. So, uh, anyways, I guess uh, I don't want to make these things too long, but the point of today is I just want to say, just pull up a chair. Uh, just stop, look around, see what else is going on if you have a moment. You know, offer somebody, you know, some support. You really don't even have to say something. You could actually just pull up a chair and sit down next to them, and that says a lot. It means, you know, I'm right there. Again, you know, the priority is to take care of the patient. I understand that, but uh, I'm not going to get too much into it. It's up to you. you want to do what you want to do out of it. So uh, the inspirational, motivational part of this is, you know, be yourself. If you see something, you know, take an initiative, uh, make a difference. So hopefully that's what I'm trying to inspire out of you guys. Again, you know, I fell out of medical school. What do I know? But hopefully as I tell you my stories over these episodes, it serves as some motivation for you guys as well too. So all the best. Take care. And uh, as always, just be yourself.